Will we have a Treaty of London after... I mean, how long has this war gone on for? 12... 15 years? More? I don't know, like, I think it started... Um, in... Yeah, 1912, so it must... Yeah, that that is a lot. 15 years, that's... That is something of... Somewhat of... Something of a war, but I have... Saved it or tried. I hope. I hope that the this massive thing here, these this alliance here, right, can beat them back. Like beat nothing. Like there's thin air basically to to conquer, and they can't even move into this fucking victory point. Two provinces away. Please, just win already. It's not that hard. Uh, I'm not gonna watch that. Uh, oh. Russian Empire has cancelled the trade agreement. No. Now it would be good to have some sort of uh, inner problem. How's Serbia? How's your biggest Greece? Is there a problem? Not Austria-Hungary, Greece, because Austria-Hungary is apparently fighting with you, kind of. I really don't don't know what what to say. So, so I'm gonna set a limit, right? If we get to episode, I don't know, fourteen, uh, let's say. If 15 and nothing happens then no okay 15 might be an exaggeration okay yeah if they if these people don't conquer the the ottomans soon enough then there's like n really no point in going on but so like what how can they not how can they not be able to do this how's how is it th is it really this difficult Like, they have all this extra IC as well. Austria-Hungary has massive IC right now. Look at that. Ooh, poison gas factory. I wonder who else has that. Germany? Germany? Poison gas? No? No? No poison gas? I mean, I, can't, I should be able to see it from kind of far away, right? So, do, let's see, no poison gas. St. Petersburg? No. Oh, I mean, the British have to have it, right? But what is this red dot here? Oh, it's a malfunction. Superior firepower. Hmm. Allowed brigades per division. I think just changed. So no poison gas. So just Austria. Uh, is Austria the only culprit? Okay. Be that way. Okay. Okay. Come on. This is it. Oh shit. Can you not move in? Okay. This time. They're actually. Okay. Antep is gonna be taken. And I'm gonna pause the game. <sighs> Come on. Auto save. Oh, Antep has been taken. Let's see. So, okay. Maybe a few more. Uh, victory points. Apparently, one there, may maybe, and then those two. Because they were at 88% and now they're still at like 90, 90% surrendering. So that was 2% for one victory point. Was this? This was worth one point. One point. But these were worth. That was worth three. All right. I see. Okay. I see. I see. And this was worth. Huh, 
30 points, okay. Alright, so it's just uh, it's going to take a little bit longer than I expected. Republic of China forced conquer in the provisional government. I think, I thought we had already established the Republic of China and that the provisional government had been over, th like, already down, down, not down elected, but like, they had, they had had an election, so therefore it was no longer provisional. <laughs> Ooh, weak tech. Oh yeah, but I mean, we don't have that either. 1929 is the date. This should be done. Apparently. Should be. Notice my uh, should and not will. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum. Bum, bum, ba -da -dum, bum. So yeah, this is gonna take a few more years. I'm not even gonna try to pay attention to that. In the meantime, we're gonna pretend we're doing stuff here. Oh, civilian airships, cool. Dun. I mean, I have to say, uh, the whole airship kind of stuff must have been kind of cool at the time. Um, obviously, it didn't really work out later on with the airplanes, but at the time, it must have been cool, especially considering uh, the whole, uh, uh, you know, um, I was going to say something smart, but I forgot what it was I was going to say. Is this a, yeah, that's a victory point. Sink them, destroy them, come on. Infrastructure. How's the infrastructure? Oh my god, Germany. Oh yeah, but uh, this is realistic. This is realistic and kind of cool though. Germany, like, r people talk about the railroads in Britain and how that was revolutionary and there were r railroads everywhere, but they tend to forget, like, the immense amount of r railroads, ugh, railroads that were built in Germany. Um, at the time, it's like a huge, like the just the whole um, militaristic way to run thing. Like it was very, you know, oh look, coal, iron, uh, rich area of the Ruhr, build infrastructure, boom, 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 and then um, the whole amazing, like super fast buildup of a, f a fleet that could match the British, although the leadership wouldn't ever really come close, but, you know, close enough. Good try, good attempt. <sighs> Salt concentration. But, um, central planning of the production. Uh, upgrades 11. 91% surrender progress. A matter of time, any day. I love how the Russian, like the German front towards the Russians, is completely empty out. Like, there's n there are no troops. Nothing whatsoever. It's insane. But then again, I can understand that they, s they sent them here, but still feels kind of like a precarious situation. Say something would happen now, right? They wouldn't have time to do anything. Of course, they could push and then just like try to go cr like a crazy campaign from the south here and then like push into Moscow or something. But by that time, the Russians, I'd assume, would have come a lot further into Germany. Unless the, I don't know, the, these militia and garrisons could be just immensely incredible at defending their positions alone to, against, like, the might of Russia. <sighs> I 
Um, so when is it? Is it 20 November 10th. Special Forces. A revolt risk. So there is a chance, certain chance of revolt here and there, which is understandable. Occupied territories and all. Um, I think the British British aren't too well off with their colonial possessions. There's a chance of revolt there as well, diplomatically. I mean, what is the diplomatic mode? Oh. Yeah, yeah. I don't have any alliances or anything. Supply map mode. Mm -hmm. Convoys to other places. And here we can see the supply routes. Uh, you know, taken by supplies to get everywhere. Uh, mostly along good infrastructure. Here's the Trans Siberian r Railroad line. And you'll see here, so if I ch interchange between supply and um, infrastructure, you'll see that they're basically the same uh, as far as we're, as we're concerned. But we can see here that the, this area is definitely low on supplies. Don't know if it's because they are low on supplies at home or if it's because they're having troubles delivering it. Yeah, infrastructure is terrible here, so hmm. maybe that's maybe that's why they're so slow. Do, do, do. Air map mode, naval. Mm -mm. Ecuador and Colombia, as well as the U.S. reaches. Boston. As fighter pilot resources. So the US, not really the most amazing army as far as I can see. And that, realistically speaking, the US wasn't. Oh, allows construction of airship. That is cool. Let's see if uh, we have. We can. Airship. Hmm. Heavy bomber. I mean, th they can't do much because we don't have any other technology related to that. But, uh, but yeah, the U.S. wasn't uh, military. Like it was very on its own. Not not a lot of uh, military power uh, during the war. You know, the pre World War One period and. Even during World War One, when it stayed neutral, but it was just a build-up of troops that would, like, it joined the war, nineteen seventeen, and then it was like it took them, f like the U.S. forever, to assemble the reserves. When they shipped the reserves, they basically landed in France, and uh, people were happy, like, yeah, okay, cool. They got to the front, they fired off a few shots in total, and then the war was like Germany, uh, or the, there was the armistice. In It's just, I find it kind of ridiculous to say that, you know, the US was uh, responsible for, like, help, uh, helped um, the, the Allies or the Entente at the time to win the war in a very you know, tied, tied, changing way. Like it was, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, no, and the British and the French and the Ru Russians fought hard as shit, especially the French. And you, you can't like the the British Navy was the one creating the blockades and putting uh, Germany into a despicable economic situation. And therefore, the armistice was signed. Okay, not because the U.S. F fired off some shots, as American history textbooks try to sell it as. 
Uh, we still stole something, but I don't really know what that was. <laughs> Diplomatically, I don't care anymore about that. I just want to know if we are... <laughs> Fifteen, yeah. Highest threat, Norway. Huh. Would you look at that? Now, where is... Mm -hmm. Light bomb development. Area of photography. Scout pilot training. Yeah, yeah, yeah rather boring campaign. I wish I hadn't chosen uh, Sweden. Now that I think about it, like uh, I should have chosen Austria-Hungary, Serbia, like anything. Not Sweden. I was expecting something more exciting, like the war would actually fire off. Ma you know, maybe, maybe we would have more fun if had the war, everything fired off as it should, you know, roughly, and we'd seen um, the Russian Civil War, and maybe we could, might, have enough l low neutrality to take Finland and do all kinds of crazy things, but as, as this campaign stands, and as far as playing as Sweden is concerned, is it's really boring. Of course, yeah, okay, I'm automating a lot of stuff, but, like, what else can I do? What am I... I'm not gonna create a super empire of ice and industrial capacity, am I? Unless... Hmm, no. Just joking. <sighs> we have to remember that IC actually takes up power and resources and money which, you know, it's hard to balance. If I build too much IC, then goodbye, economy. And Belgium. Do -do. Do -do -do. <sighs> what kind of troops do we have here? And the British have some. Oh yeah, Germans have their their share. Um, these are mostly HQs. British HQs. It's not not really a lot protecting anything from anything. Um, there's a militia. Uh, yeah, along this side we can see that the British might have an... But it's also just HQs. Okay, some infantry and militia there. Um, military police, some militia. The French would dominate. Uh, depends how the Belgians would act, but I think as far as Eastern Africa is concerned, if there was a war... Um, I think at the moment Germany would be in the advantage. Mm -mm -mm. How much longer will this take? Can't stand this. Now, how do I l generic alliances work? Like, if I was to offer alliance, same concept as to joining the coalition. Hmm. It's just a matter of raising our. Huh. Raising our threat so much that uh, Norway reaches 84. Then we can declare war, I guess, maybe? 
I don't know. Uh, we're just waiting this out. August 1929. That's another two years. One year every ten minutes. Kind of, kind of a good pace. Like, just minute-wise. Almost perfect to the clock. Um, Mexico? No? No? Uh, what was the telegram called? I mean, Americans learn it by heart, but the Zim uh, yeah, Zimmerman, yeah, Z the Zimmerman telegram that uh, Germany sent off to uh, the Mexicans, encouraged them to go to war, and told them that Germany would supply them with the weapons if that was possible. I I'm not really, like, I don't know what I think about it. I don't know... I mean, I'm not questioning, okay, I might be questioning its authenticity a little bit, slightly, because if you think about it, right, Germany knew they could, wouldn't be able to supply Mexico with um, the, 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 the weapons, so it almost feels like something that would be conco concocted just for the U.S., Politically to have a way to join the war. Not that that really brought anything other than glorifying the the U.S. and starting off the military industri industrial complex. But you know, whatever it is. Uh, let's see. Allows. Oh. Okay. So I'm gonna pause it off and uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> see ya.